Okay, yeah. So thank you and welcome to the dispensing um, lecture series. Um, I will go through it now. So for today, um, I've just officially welcomed you. Um, we are going to cover just a few things around the requirements for completing the course, just to ensure that we are on the same page. Today's focus is on how to approach your portfolio of evidence, specifically looking at dispensing labels. Remember last week we covered prescriptions. Um, today, with the Saturday, we'll only have time to cover um, one session, and then the next session we will then cover um, the next Thursday. Um, we will then uh, probably at the end have some time to get feedback from you um, around the course and how it's going and elements that you might want us um, to improve. Just a reminder that uh, if you want to get timely feedback, you know, um, use the email, even when you have to submit your final, your final portfolio of evidence, uh, send an email to support at aquatraining.com. And uh, the, the session is being recorded, so it will be made available for you, um, either as an audio or a video through our YouTube um, channel, which we will share the link um, later today. Thank you for that. So in terms of requirements for completing the course, number one is that you need to read, right? So we've got what we call a resource guide or basically the manual for the course, which I have shared with you. Make sure that you read all the chapters in the manual because at the end, you'll be expected to write a final um, exam, um, which is based um, on that specific um, um, section. Um, and then also to note that um, you have to compile a, a portfolio um, of evidence. So if you go through your learning, uh, your learner assessment guide, you will find that there is eight learning activities that you need to complete. Um, those activities before you complete them, you need to read, then look at the requirements um, and then submit your final portfolio of evidence. Um, the final portfolio of evidence should have your affidavit, um, which is signed by the, yourself, the commissioner and a witness who can be your, your colleague. Uh, so that we can identify you, the copy of your ID, and then uh, with the eight learning activities um, covered as, as part of that. It is, uh, it is your responsibility, right, to keep a copy of all the elements of your portfolio of evidence. It's not the responsibility of the school. It is your responsibility. So ensure that at the end, you are able to submit a full and completed um, portfolio of evidence. So as we go through these weekly uh, sessions, like last week we did prescriptions, my expectation is that you have already done, you know, the, the, the part on the prescriptions. If you have not done so, you will fail to complete the course. This week we are doing um, um, dispensing labels. So immediately after here, um, in addition to your reading, go through and, and, and really complete, you know, your task in terms of dispensing labels, right? Just also to remind you that to qualify for the uh, course c c c c certificate of competency, um, you have to um, uh, submit your portfolio of evidence. So that's the, 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 the first one as per uh, the learner assessment uh, book. So that book actually is the portfolio of evidence, but it becomes a portfolio of evidence once you have uh, uh, completed all the sections. You may even make additional attachments um, uh, if maybe the space is not adequate. Then also you need to pass the summative assessment. So as soon as you are done with your POE, you submit, we then uh, uh, book you for a summative assessment, which includes a written multiple choice um, test, including the practical uh, component where you would be demonstrating your understanding and application of what we would have done um, up to that point in time, right? So today we are going to focus on dispensing labels and we are looking at how to approach your portfolio of evidence, specifically focusing on dispensing labels. Um, if you, there's two documents always that we use. It's your learner. I think the spelling 
is incorrect, but it's fine. It's learner assessment guide and your resource guide. Your resource guide is your manual where you need to read the theory, right? The learner assessment guide um, has learning activities, um, which are eight. Um, and then uh, this uh, dispensing labels is on page 26. And for you to pass and get your labels correctly, um, you have to, to read page 33 and then page 141 up to 144. So that is what um, we are going to go through um, at this point in time. So I'm hoping that um, you, you follow. So let us start and then uh, we, we take it from there. A few seconds. So these are the um, activities you, you have to complete. There is an affidavit that you have to do, which confirms your identity and that the work that you are going to submit represents your work. And then there is uh, eight learning activities. The first one is evaluation of prescriptions, which uh, we did last week. If you didn't attend last week's session, you can visit our YouTube page or even our, our, our link for the audio, and then you can listen through and follow and then do your prescriptions. Today, we are going to focus on um, this um, dispensing um, labels. And then on Thursday, we are likely to do prescription records. And if time allows, we might do it together with the information leaflet um, so that we can do calculations which would require a full um, session. Um, and so on. So you can see learning activity number two, dispensing labels is on page 26. And uh, that is what we are going to focus on um, today. So I'm going to go to that specific page, page um, 26. So you can see it's a learning activity number two, dispensing labels. And these are the outcomes. Once you have completed this learning activity, you should be able to prepare a dispensing label, right? So that is the key output here. We want to make sure that you are able to label your medicines, right? Remember medicines come in a package, but the package is not a label. You have to label all medicines. It is a legal requirement that every medicine that is dispensed should have a label. You also need to be able to demonstrate an understanding of the need for special warnings uh, based on the kinds of medicines um, you are prescribing, right? Um, this is the section we're gonna uh, focus on, on how, which gives you the theory. So you have to know the theory so that your practice is underpinned by uh, the laws and the theories that govern um, the preparation of these labels. And it's important that you are able to do labels for the different types of dosage forms. So remember when you do your final evaluation during the practical exam, if we give you an ointment or we give you tablets or a, a solution, right? These, those are different dosage forms and they have different requirements in terms of how you prepare um, those labels, right? And you can see here that the products packaging, so the box that comes with the drug is not um, 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 recognized as a label. So you have to create your own label as per the requirements of the law. The labels are prescribed by, I mean, are, um, are developed and, 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 and designed by the dispenser. Whoever is issuing the medicines um, has to ensure that there's a label and those labels should include warnings and guidelines on how patients should be taking those medicines, right? And the activity, you can see, you have to prepare labels for the prescription three items. So if you did a learning activity one, you already know that there was there were three prescriptions, prescription one, prescription two, prescription three, and you have to follow um, the legal requirements uh, for that, right? So let's maybe slowly, before we go into the theory, look at prescription three again, right? A few seconds. Let's look at prescription three. I'm hoping I'm not too fast for your internet. 
there's prescription three. So prescription three has uh, two uh, kinds of drugs, right? There's uh, Spesadex and there's DF118 tablets, right? Remember, you would have corrected uh, already um, this prescription. You would have corrected this prescription um, at this point in time. Uh, so you would use your own prescription, the final one that you have corrected to then prepare these two um, 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 labels for these two uh, drugs, right? And uh, a dosage for me. So you've got a tablet and an eye drop, um, which is what you're gonna have to prepare, right? And then uh, in terms of now the theory, um, I specifically said that you have to go to page 33 and you can see we are referring to um, regulation eight, which covers the labeling of medicines, right? So there are specific requirements for labeling of medicines. These depend upon the type of formulation and the size and the form of the container. So some containers around some containers, it's a box. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a, a plastic um, container, right? So each container that leaves the manufacturer must have certain information on the label and carton. This information provides the information needed to prescribe and dispense medicine. When a medicine now is dispensed and labeled for a patient, the label once again must have certain information on it. So that is the, the, the law, right? And then, uh, we, we, and then we will now go to page um, 141. Uh, I'm repeating the pages because I'm expecting that you would be then um, using these uh, uh, pages um, as I share with you, you know, for, 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 for guidance. So, so that's quite um, important, right? So let's look at it then um, together. So preparation of labels, that is today's topic. So the labeling requirements, all medicines uh, dispensed by a person who's authorized. Remember once you get your dispensing license, you become an authorized dispenser of medicines, must have a label, must have a label attached to the container, right? But the label is also regulated in terms of the type of information um, that should be included on the label. Any medicine which is sold by a pharmacist or yourself, um, you know, in the, irrespective of where you work, um, must be sold in a package to which is attached a label. So number one, you should never remove the package, but on the package, you will then put a label on that package, right? Now this label, what information uh, must be included on the label, right? The, the, the propriety name, so if, if, it's, an, if, it's, a, it's, a, if it's, a, it's an ARV drug, it might be, you must include both the approved name and the proprietary name. So if it's a, 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 a Dumiva, you know, it will be Dumiva, but this Dumiva has the original drugs, which is Abacave and Lamivudine. So you include the drug names for each of the active drugs that are included in that medicine, it must be there. The name of the person whose, whose treatment such medicine is sold. So the patient's name and details must be there so that there's no mixing when they get home. There must also be directions with regard to how they should use the medicine. You know, take it at night, after food, before food, or three times a day, that's very important. And then the name and the business address of the person authorized. So your name as the dispenser, Sister Mawela, staying at section three, I mean, your practice or your business address is section three, so where to, you know, that information has to be there the date when the medicines were dispensed to the patient, and then the reference number. Remember, we will talk to recording, um, I think uh, 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 next week, uh, record keeping. Your prescription book should have prescription numbers that are used as reference so that there's traceability. In other words, if a patient becomes sick at home, 
and they come in with a container of drugs, we must be able to trace that container to a specific prescription, to a specific uh, dispenser. So there must be a reference number, uh, which is sometimes called a prescription number. Um, you know, so the quantity contained in the container must also be indicated. So if there's 28 tablets that you are issuing, it must be documented that there's 28 tablets of Panado in this container. And then um, you must make sure that it is clearly marked, you know, by the prescriber, the name of the medicine of each ingredient must not be included. So, you know, here is where we want to, 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 to protect uh, um, uh, patients. So if when you do your, 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 pre, your prescribing, you know, for someone um, who's going to dispense, but you want uh, to ensure that the active ingredients of that drug should not be labeled. And this might be because maybe at home they have someone who's abusing certain drugs, so you don't want to write that there's codeine maybe on that label. You can make a note and say um, 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 in your prescription that certain um, ingredients should not be labeled. It is this term non nomen propriam. It means the prescriber, if the prescriber said certain ingredients should not be noted on the label, then you, you need to respect that, it's very important. And then also the label should also state, for example, if it, what formulation are we talking about? Is this a cream? Is this a mixture? Is this a tablet? Is this a solution? You know, and it must also include labels uh, for external use only so that people are not confused. You know, I read the, uh, where a pharmacy made a mistake. Uh, instead of giving a, an oral gargling solution for, for the throat, um, they, 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 they gave us a, a Selsan um, shampoo. So the old lady was uh, um, rinsing her mouth with a shampoo all along, right? So it's very important that the warning labels like store in a fridge or, or maybe finish in seven days or keep out of reach of children or, uh, or keep it in a dark place for medicines that are not supposed to, exp to be exposed to, to the sun. Um, that's quite um, very, very, very important, right? So here are then um, the guidelines for labeling medicines. So, and, and, and the other thing is you must remember you are writing the, a label for a patient. So be, be very cautious of that so that your label does not talk, you know, above uh, the, the patient's understanding of, of, of the language. And you are allowed to use, you know, any language. Uh, in an ideal world, these are, are printed, but well, if you can't print, you'll have to do a handwritten one, but make sure that your handwriting is, is legible. So these are the requirements, you know? So the information must be accurate, right? The name of the drug, the frequency, how to use it, make sure that it's as per the package insert and, and the correct use for the diagnosis of that patient. And it must follow also what is written on the actual prescription. We must be able to read, the patient must be able to read and understand. It must be intelligible based on the type of patient. So if you are dealing with an illiterate person, you really have to make sure that you can even draw, you know, um, so that people can see the, the information, the way it's arranged should be unambiguous. It should not confuse um, the patient. Um, the terms used, the language should be understandable by a lay person. So don't do a dispensing label as if you are writing for yourself as a professional, but remember you are doing it uh, for a lay person. It must also be adequate and relevant, right? So avoid too much information, make sure that it is straight to the point. It is easy for people to read it, but importantly to interpret it and to um, understand. Um, and the label must also comply with uh, laws that govern um, um, such medicines. And some of these include that if uh, uh, labels on dispensed medicines should indicate clearly the patient for whom it has been prescribed, which we have discussed, and the law says the title, Miss or Mister, especially the gender is very important. Uh, the names, initials, and surname should appear on the label of each medicine. Um, you know, when we do these facility audits as part of the national cost standards, I don't know how many people, patients live with medicines that are not labeled. 
Some just have one and three there, meaning take one, three, three. no name, no, no instructions, no advice, no warnings. So, so, so that is uh, quite important. Remember, we've already said the name and the address of the authorized prescriber, which is yourself, once you have your dispensing license, um, all that information um, should be included um, um, in, on, on, the, on the label, including the reference number for the prescription registrar entry. So we'll, we'll talk about a document you need to keep when you are prescribing. You must have a prescription register where you document every prescription that is issued um, out, you know, from your clinic, um, so that when uh, someone says, no, I got this medicine from your facility, you can actually trace it back to your prescription book or even um, registry, right? And remember the, 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 the contents of the container. So what is the name of the drug? Um, how many tablets are included of that drug and the instructions on how to use the drug one, three times a day, at night, whatever the issue is. And then also instructions as part of how to care for those medicines, where they should be stored. Is it in a cool temperature? Is it in a dark place? Is it in a fridge? Maybe it needs to be frozen, you know? So there's quite a number of medicines that have um, specific um, requirements, right? So some of the few things is that the labeling of specific dosage forms. So that's going to be quite important for you to know that, for example, if you are labeling an antiseptic um, solution, um, if, they, if they need to dilute it, those instructions need to be there, you know, because some is, uh, the antiseptic, they'll tell you, you need 10 mils and mix it with warm water. So all those things should be there. And patients should be warned to, dis, to discard, to throw away the stock solution after seven days. You know? So all antiseptic solutions, um, they are not recommended. Once opened, um, they are not recommended uh, to be used for more than um, seven days. Um, and the diluted, once they dilute, the diluted solution should be um, discarded you know, immediately after use. Um, if it's capsules, um, uh, should generally be swallowed as whole um, with water and, and other liquids sometimes. So it's very important that uh, people know that they're not supposed to open capsules because otherwise it affects their absorption. So that information needs to be there. If it's a diluted uh, product, you know, it needs to be clear. You know, patients need to know that this is a diluted uh, medicine, and that means the shelf life, the, the amount of time that that medicine can be kept after uh, you uh, start, once they've opened it, is very limited, you know, and the strength um, of that dilution should also be noted to say this is a 2% um, 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 solution or, 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 or you know, um, and so on, or a 10%. So, Patients need to know, and all that information needs to be um, on the on the pre, on on the the, uh, the label. If it's ear drops, um, the method of use should be explained to the patient. So these are ear drops. How do you use them? You know, is it two drops? Is it uh, and after pouring, do you have to stay in a certain position for a while? or well, you know and and some eardrops are meant to remove debris out of the ears so they might have to put their eardrops in and maybe later clean their ears so quite important and you might have seen that um, even eye ointments have limitations in terms of how long um, you can keep them so it's very important that it is clear that this medicine is for the eye you know this medicine is for the ear so that people um, at home, there's no confusion and they don't end up uh, mixing um, um, stuff. So this is an eye ointment, quite important. Um, and you can see that um, it's very important because eye, things that you put in the eye must remain um, sterile. So that's quite important to maintain. Eye drops, I think the key thing here is time because uh, the expiry date needs to be included, the temperature at which these drops must be stored, and the fact that you cannot use any eye drops beyond 30 days after um, um, opening the container. So quite, quite important. 
peseries and, and, and suppositories. So this label should indicate that the product must be stored in a good place. So if you are going to, to dispense a suppository and you do not say that they must be stored in a good place, your label becomes um, inadequate. And, the, and that the root of use should be very clear that you cannot take you know, something that is supposed to be used um, rectally, but then take it, you know, um, uh, per os, um, that would create a lot of problems uh, for, 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 for your patients, right? And then um, the last few sections, just to say that if you work in the public sector, some medicines come in already prepacked, right? So it's very important that even when medicines are prepacked, that there must be a label um, that you're going to put there to say whose drugs are these, um, what is the reference for the prepacking, um, how many tablets are in there, and then the name of the hospital or clinic um, that is dispensing. So, so quite important. And remember, labels are put there for a purpose. So before you dispense, right, you need to ensure that you verify now. Let's say you have dispensed, so your prescription and dispensing book is here, you've got your medicines, now you are comparing, right? Whether you have labeled them correct. Because sometimes people, they do labels, three labels first, and then they want to put these labels on the right drug. You mix labels, you are going to cause problems because the patient will take a certain drug wrongly because the label that is there is not for the correct um, drug. So you must always check um, when preparing the label that you are preparing it correctly. When you attach, is this label for this drug? It's very important. And also, once you have to prepare the prescription, now you, have, you, you, you are preparing the drugs to give to the patient, you need to always check to ensure that you minimize errors, right? Uh, uh, and you can see the recommendation is that you must check labels at least three times. So when now a patient has went home with a drug that has a wrong label and then they come back with problems, uh, how do you defend yourself? Because you, 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 you would have failed to check the, the label three times. What reason are you going to give? Because you would have violated a known procedure, especially if you have a dispensing license. It, it won't stand in court that I forgot because you must follow the procedure, do it properly, check it three times to ensure that you minimize um, errors that can be linked with that practice, right? Now, coming back um, to, to learning activity two, which is dispensing of labels. Your activity is to prepare labels for prescription three, uh, which you, you would have already corrected and improved. You would have done your own uh, a, a prescription three with your name, the address and the information and any other information which was not correct on that prescription, like if there was no date or the patient's gender and so on, you would have corrected those. Now you're gonna take that prescription. So you're taking a prescription in front of you. You are now preparing labels for the same prescription, right? I'm gonna go back to that uh, uh, prescription, a few seconds. So this is the prescription, right? Remember you would have corrected it. It will be you here, Sister Mawela, um, with your credentials, professional nurse or clinical nurse practitioner from the Medical University of the World with your uh, uh, practice number there, and then your address, you would have the date, but then there's two drugs, right? Even this patient uh, details, you might need to add other things if they are missing there. And remember, these are high level scheduled drugs. So even when you do the dispensing, the schedule, the, the control of medicines, you know, you have to take that into account. So you can see it's an eye drop. Remember we said, uh, firstly, the name of the person whom we are prescribing must be on the label. Uh, the, the name of the uh, dispenser plus their address and contact number uh, must be on the, on the, on the label. Um, the name of the drug, of the ingredients, right? Both the, 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 the propriety name and the, and the general use name uh, must be there. You must state this is an eye drop. Is it for external use only or internal use only? The concentration must also be there. 
the instructions on how to use and how frequent and it's an eye drop so there's a warning that you must put there to say uh, this medicine once opened must never be used beyond 30 days you know that's going uh, going to be to be to be key and then how much uh, uh, this is a 5 ml um spesadex um eye drop and then many other things so you do a label that you are going to put on the actual um, package um, of this drug. And then you go on, you do the label for, 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 for the other drug and then ensure that the language is simple. You can even use drawings and stuff as because you know you're not writing for a doctor, you are writing for, for, for a lay person, right? So if you have not yet done this task, you have uh, three to four days to complete the task. Uh, because uh, by Thursday this week, you must have completed it so that we can then um, look at um, um, the next um, task at hand. Right. I hope you, you have managed to grasp um, and, and learn something from, from, from this session. Um, and then I'm going to give you some time for, for questions. And, and then we take it uh, from there. So going back to our um, to our presentation today, we have dealt with how to approach your portfolio of evidence in terms of dispensing labels, right? Um, and then uh, this is learning activity two on your learner assessment guide. It's on page twenty six. Your resource guide. You use page thirty three, and then you go to page one forty one to one forty four. Right, so at this point in time, um, the session would end here. Just remember that uh, you are able to communicate with us via that email, even when you want to send your, um, your, your portfolio of evidence, you would then use um, the same um, email address, right?